Well, let's spend a minute here on these definitional elements that are that are tricky. And I want to ask you how you describe or define what a DAO is then. Yeah, so some people regret asking me that question because it's one of the things I've spent a lot of time on and I have potentially a very long-winded answer. I've been working on, on shortening that a bit. I am pretty opinionated about what a DAO is. What I'm less opinionated on is whether being a DAO is required. And I, I've, I tried hard to make it clear that when I say something that I see that I don't think is a DAO, when I, when I say that's it's not a DAO, that's not necessarily a, a value judgment of that thing itself. It is more a kind of definitional description of what I am seeing. And the reason that I, I feel like it's important to be to have clarity about that is because it's important to understand and recognize what it is that DAOs can do uniquely relative or compared to other types of organizations that we've seen in the past. There's a ton of those organizations out there. There's like a, many different types, including ones that are very DAO-like, holacracy, sociocracy, co-ops, all of these have like a lot of values that they that they share with the people in the DAO space of sort of individual employee or sort of contributor autonomy, bottoms up rather than top down. So I think it's really important to recognize that those exist, but then also ask what it is that DAOs specifically do that is unique. Like what can DAOs do that unlocks something new that we've never seen before? If we, if we have an organization that is on-chain, that is basically just like one of those other organizations, we could call it an on-chain version of those other organizations, and that's perfectly great. But what is it that DAOs do uniquely? And what I have come to understand that DAOs do uniquely is they, it's, it's really two big things. One is that they are capable of distributing executive power, so the power to execute actions with the shared resource of the of the community of the organization so like the treasury basically the power to execute actions is distributed across all members of that community that is something that is just not possible we can sort of simulate it with legal contracts and that's kind of what a co-op is but just there's some fundamental challenges or separations that still occur uh, where in a co-op you end up having like a few people still like in control of the co-op's bank account. Whereas in a DAO, everybody is in control of the DAO's treasury. Now, certain people may be delegated to take certain actions using the treasury, but ultimately in a DAO, everybody remains in control, has executive power over the treasury. So that's the big, big thing number one. And then big thing number two is that information about the DAO's crucial operations remains or is fully transparent and accessible to everybody, at least within that community. And those two things are just, I think, quite literally impossible without blockchains, without smart contracts.